in this box I've got some golf balls that date back to 1920, making them 100 years old. I bought them from eBay and they cost me £50 each. I know. And I've got two of them. I'm going to test them, see how they feel, see how they perform. And I'm also, towards the end of the video, as long as I don't lose any, I'm going to cut one open to see what's inside these golf balls from 1920. Let me show you what they look like first because they're in their original packaging still. Okay, check out these. Now they have been protected as they've been shipped to me. And what's amazing about this, they're in their original packaging. So this is, used to be called sweet packets. So they are Spalding Crowflight dot second conforming to RNA regulations because in 1920 the regulation did change for weight and diameter of a golf ball. I'm holding a piece of history there, 100 years old. Right, let's uh, let's open it. Uh, <laughs> don't quite know where to start. This is a, oh, I don't want to ruin the packaging too much. Why do I need to start with this? Oh, it's kind of ripping a little bit. Wow, oh my goodness. Look at that. It's in mint condition. Spalding Crow Flight. And as you notice, the dimples are different. They are a square, kind of grid like dimpling effect. Oh, that is amazing. Right, let's tee it up and give it a smash. So here we go, first shot, a hundred year old golf ball that cost me 50 pound. I don't want to lose it. That'd be a disaster. All right, let's give it a hit. See what it can do. Oh no! <laughs> I'm only joking. The real one's in my pocket. I'm going to hit on the putting green first, get a feel for it. So I'll be honest, I tricked you then, didn't I? Let's get a feel for the ball before taking it on the golf course. <laughs> that was a bit of fun, but in all seriousness, I'm intrigued to know what this feels like. I'm gonna head to the putting green first and get a bit of a concept of what it puts like. The design of it is square mesh pattern, and it's so different to a modern golf ball now. That's a Pro V1 in my hands. First off, look at the size difference. Pro V1 is bigger. Obviously, the color's slightly different, and I've on the normal golf ball you've got round dimples now but really dimples started life in many different ways but this was super popular at the early nine, 1900s effectively 100 years old i've only got two of them as i mentioned i bought them off ebay for 50 pound a golf ball i know crazy prices if i keep them i'm definitely going to cut one in half to see what's inside it so let's get down to the putting green and see how it feels on the short shots before playing some holes with it this is awesome love it this ball's a hundred years old and it's never felt grass. <laughs> there you go, that's what you were designed to do. Right, let's have a few putts with this one. And also, it looks tiny. That's the one thing when I still got the Pro V with me. It looks behind the ball like a third of the, well, two thirds of the size, even though it's not probably that different. Right, first putt with this golf ball, a hundred years old. Imagine if it went in. Oh, it's soft. <laughs> it's, it's got like a weird, like, there's no, um, feels like the ball just goes, uh, and then the ball comes off. There's no, like, compression. I know it's only a short put. I'll just do this Pro V1 as a comparison. Yeah, definitely a different feel. Let's try it from this short range. And what's mad, like, going back, is that there's no real alignment on it. I mean, the, the Crow Flight, and there's the Spalding, really only alignment came in much later down the line. I'll line up the crow flight. Isn't it a funny looking thing? It's so, uh, it's so unusually patterned. All right, come on. Oh, that's a shame. I wanted to, I wanted to, to go in. Let's have a few more. That's the first time this ball after a hundred years, over a, Hundred years old as it ever got in the hole. Right, I'm gonna hit a few putts. Give this golf ball a good run out. I 
Oh yeah. <laughs> you know what? I'm not having much luck with this golf ball. I can hardly hold anything. Considering it's smaller and the whole end should, in theory, be bigger, I've not really held much at all. Feeling-wise, it's got a weird feel to it. It's definitely got more of like a hollow feel to it. As you hit it, it feels like the ball comes off kind of softer, but it's not a soft feel. It almost comes out like the ball's slower coming off the face compared to a normal ball. I'm so intrigued to know what's inside this. Let's hit a couple of chip shots around the green and see what happens then. So these golf balls aren't designed for modern grooves. It's cut up like crazy only after a few shots. And that's understandable, obviously, the technology of the clubs has changed enormously. There's a couple of things I noted. It feels lighter when hitting it. So as you hit it, it feels like the ball's kind of not again coming off the club face, a bit like what I found on the putter. And it definitely moves slightly strange in the air, almost like the wind is affecting it more than again a modern day ball. And that would make sense for these dimples, this mesh squared pattern as opposed to the round dimples that we know you know what though i'm up for a challenge uh, <laughs> i'm gonna play a par five here at the marriott worsley park 18th hole it's a long one let's see what i can score with a golf ball that's this old and then fingers crossed i don't lose it because then i'm gonna chop it up let's see what's inside this bad boy come on let's go and tee it up on the 18th Okay, change of plan, the 18th hole was busy and because it's starting to go dark, I don't want to miss the opportunity to play with this ball. So I've come to the second hole, which is still quite a tough par four. I'm so conscious about losing this, I really don't want to lose it because uh, it's a bit wet in parts, so I've got to hit it a good one. Now what's mad about this, obviously, I'm using modern equipment. I've got a modern driver with the ball. It just looks tiny, by the way, all this excess was from that silly uh, joke golf ball I hit before. So let's give this a hit. First driver shot. Again, it feels like if I put myself in the brain of the golf ball, it was designed to play golf, it was designed to hit with a driver. Granted, not a driver from this era, but still a driver. I've never wanted to hit a golf ball as straight in my life, because bearing in mind I paid 50 quid for this. Come on. Let's see what it can do. It's unbelievably small behind the ball. Come on, hit a good one. It's all right, it's a bit up the left. You know what was interesting? It sounded different to what I expected. I felt like I was gonna hear a sound that's a little bit more hollow, but it sounded almost like the center was, I know it's not, made out of metal. It sounded much more pingy. Flight-wise, super low. Didn't really get up in the air at any point. And I felt like I hit that well, I swung it well. Let's get down there. Fingers crossed I didn't lose it because I saw it bounce. Come on. Okay, found it. Now I just wanted to clear something up. When I said on the tee before it's wet in parts, I meant the golf course, obviously. We're in the winter, we've had a lot of rain. I didn't want that ball to plug and disappear into the ground. Now, according to my calculations, I've hit that grand total of 210 yards, which wasn't too bad. And what's crazy, imagine using technology like this back in the day. 150 yards to the middle of the green. Now that for me normally is probably a hard nine, maybe an eight iron, but I'm gonna kind of hit a little seven. Uh, yeah, I think that's right. Because think back in 1920s, I mean, was even TVs around? Must have been. Probably about the right time. <laughs> right. YouTube and Facebook weren't around, that's for sure. Little seven iron. See if we can land on the green. It's not sat great, but let's give it a hit. Oh, 
didn't catch it well. That's more on me than the ball. That's a shame. Just on that slight down slope. Left myself with a horrible little pitch now. That's a shame. Go a bit, go a bit. Oh, it's just, it's definitely harder to judge distances just because you don't quite know it's going to come off the face, but we're on the green, putting, putting for par. I do get this comment a lot, and yes, I do always repair divots. I just don't always do it on camera, but there you go. So one thing I do notice is, look how much more mud gets into those kind of square mesh patterns. This ball's getting battered with those uh, modern grooves. Right, I've got an outside chance for par, and it is an outside chance. Go. Oh, it was bang on line as well. Just not quite quite getting used to the kind of feel, obviously, because it is so much lighter than a modern ball, which just surprised me. It was around this time, 1920s, when they did have a rule put in about weight and diameter. I think this might have been one of the first balls that came in after that. Now, let's be a traditionalist. Let's go flag out. It's what the ball would have wanted. For bogey, <laughs> come on. Don't feel like I've held much with this just yet, but this is the time. Yes! <laughs> I shouldn't be celebrating a bogey, but I will take that every time. So before I do cut this golf ball open, I think it would be sacrilege if I didn't give it a chance to do what it was made for. To have a chance of making a hole in one, I'm going to play a par three before finally cutting it open to see what's inside. Come on, I think it's what this golf ball deserves. So here we go. Before the sun goes down, this is its chance. The Spalding Crow flight from 1920. Par three down the hill, playing just under 150 yards. I'm gonna hit a hard eight iron. When normally I'd probably hit nine. I mean, this would be quite incredible if uh, if this actually went in. It spent a hundred years in a wrapper for this moment. Come on. I feel like I've got a lot of pressure on this shot. Oh, it's a bit thin and it's not going to get there. Oh, that's miles short. That's short in the bunker. Now, just for reference, if I was to hit a Pro V1, because that's enough club to get there. There's definitely a difference in distance. If I hit an eight iron on the green now with the Pro V1, I might even hit it too far. Down the flag and just drawing a little bit. And yeah, it's actually gone through the green. The difference there is probably 20 yards between the ball from 1920 and the Pro V1. Right. Let's say, hopefully we've not lost it. Let's cut it in half and see what's inside the iconic ball. Sorry, ball, I didn't get you a hole in one. So you know what? The Spalding Crow flight didn't do bad. It hit the bunker here just short, but it's probably traveled about 140 yards. Now, in contrast, that Pro V1 is flown through the back of the green. It's probably 25 yards difference between those two, about 160 odd yards, which I normally hit my eight iron. And now the time has come. Let's go and get that ball and find out what's inside. So I feel a bit sorry that I didn't give it a chance to get, I gave it a chance to get a hole in one, but just didn't do great. I'll give it a quick clean before, <laughs> can't believe I'm chopping a 50, 50 pound golf ball open, but we've got to see what's inside it, right? Okay. So, that's uh, a bit bigger. Just hoping it's not gonna be, liquid filled wow it's super soft as it goes through i'm imagining some elasticated materials let me just move that out of the way it's getting stuck oh <laughs> it's actually a bit harder than I expected come on get through it here we go here we go 
oh it's quite a clean cut which i'm happy about inside the golf ball from 1920 wow look at that golf balls have come on a long way but there's some similarities it's got a core wrapped in elastic 100 year old golf ball thanks for watching guys stay tuned lots more to come make sure you subscribe to the channel i'm going to treasure this forever and certainly the one i've still got in the bag we'll see you next time